<laughs> Thank you all for coming. I'm Russ Himley, the director of the Geophysical Laboratory, one of two departments of the Carnegie Institution here on this campus. I'm very pleased that you've been able to join us this evening for the lecture. Uh, the purpose of these talks is to introduce our neighbors to some of the research that takes place here at Broad Branch Road. A little background about the Geophysical Laboratory. Uh, our department was established in 1905 with the goal to understand the materials and processes of the earth from its crust to its core where rocks and minerals experience great pressures and temperatures. And this focus on extreme conditions, as we call them, uh, is one of the <coughs> dominant themes uh, of research here in our department. So we study materials and processes of the deep earth, the interiors of other planets. We also study the practical side of materials under extreme pressures and temperatures from the standpoint of technology, including applications in energy, which is the focus of uh, the new Obama administration. And we also study life in extreme environments, which is the topic of tonight's lecture. So we study extremophiles, and extremophiles are organisms that thrive or survive in what is conventionally considered uh, hostile environments, and these environments can be either very hot, very cold, alkaline, acid, <laughs> very dry, salty, or very high pressures, and we really don't fully understand how microbes can uh, survive in these environments. So this is a very interesting area of study. And these environments are also common in the solar system, so by studying life in these environments on Earth, we can get a better understanding of what kind of life may exist elsewhere in the cosmos. Uh, tonight's speaker uh, is Adrienne Kish. Adrienne re received her bachelor's degree in molecular biology and microbiology from the University of Victoria, Canada. In 2001, she began working as an intern at the NASA Kennedy Space Center and then later as a research assistant investigating the life support systems used in the space station. And among her tasks was to analyze microbial samples from the shuttle's wet trash, which I understand included the diapers the astronauts wore during launches and spacewalks. Uh, Adrian later completed a degree in space studies at the International Space University in Strasbourg, France, where she learned rocket design, propulsion, astrobiology and space law, and in 2003 she uh, earned her PhD in cell biology and molecular genetics at the University of Maryland, where she examined the survival of salt-loving organisms or halophiles, which we'll hear about after exposure to radiation. Adrian came to the Geophysical Laboratory as a postdoctoral fellow in 2008 and has been doing laboratory microbiology studies of organisms at high pressure and in high salt environments that mimic conditions on Mars, which I think is clearly a step up from the microbiology of dirty diapers. So this evening, Adrian will tell us something about that work in a talk entitled, Life at the Extremes, Microbes, Salt, and Pressure. to talk about this when he was uh, mentioning that I had actually sampled the shuttle's trash. I gotta mention that the Hubble landing now has a little significance for me because I was processing samples from the last Hubble repair. So they had contacted me saying, we think we've lost one of the Hubble tools, we think it's in the trash, which had been sitting in the shuttle on the runway at 95 degrees for three days. And they asked if I could please dig through the trash and find it for them. So I had to seal off the lab and put on a mask and brave my way through it just to find out an hour later that it's okay, they found the tool. <laughs> so today we'll be speaking about life in the extreme environments. The picture that you're seeing here is actually the salt crystal with tiny fluid inclusions. 
And later I'll be showing how you can actually find tiny microbes inside some of these fluid inclusions. Astrobiology has been described as the science with one sampling point, Earth. So it seems unusual that we would consider this a science. If we only know there's life on Earth, how can we study life elsewhere? The answer is that we use life here that is considered to be very extreme, can survive very harsh conditions, and these conditions are actually common throughout the solar system. So today what we'll be talking about is, first of all, introducing you to the way that life looks like to me as a molecular biologist, discuss what are extreme environments and what are extremophiles, then discuss some of my work with halophiles and radiation, and life under pressure, and wrap up with studies of analog environments of other planetary bodies. So let's start with a little bit of training for you. Do you see the world the way that I see it? Here's some images of different kinds of cells. You have these cup-shaped cells. You can have rod-shaped cells with little flagellum that help them to swim. You can even have square microbial cells. It's a new discovery, and nobody's quite sure why they're square, but there they are. When I look at a cell, this is what I see. This is a schematic diagram of one of those cells. <laughs> to give you an idea, that central part is central metabolism. The parts on the outside, these are just pumps. And they're involved with exchange of materials into the cell and back out of the cell. And if you blow up one of these areas, you can actually see there's these channels. You can bring materials in and pump them back out. It's not unlike looking at a car engine versus the schematic of a car engine. It's the same way of looking at it. So in essence, what I do is look under the hood of bacteria. People have gotten very used to seeing pictures of DNA now in the news with all of the genome research that's going on. So here we have this double helix of DNA winding up and packing inside of chromosomes. Well, when I look at DNA, I'm interested in the sequence. This is the full genome sequence of a microbe. It has three parts, one big chromosome and two smaller ones. And every little piece of color you see here is a different gene. Now, of course, you can't see all of those, so let me blow a section up for you. Each one of these is a different gene. The ones with numbers, we have no idea what they are. We're trying to figure this out. The ones that we do know, in this section, there's some involved with regulation, and some of all with DNA replication. But look at the size of the task of trying to interpret the genome. There's something in biology called the central dogma of biology. It's the basis of how we look at cells and genetics. You start with DNA. You've got to view DNA like your cookbook. It's got a whole lot of recipes in it, all contained together in one volume. DNA codes for what's called mRNA. This is like a single recipe out of this big cookbook. And in turn, the RNA turns into proteins. So that's like taking your recipe and actually making the cake in the end. This is how we actually look at what happens inside of a cell. So what are extremophiles? I've been told often that being Canadian, I should be naturally designated as an extremophile because we have an unnatural love of the cold. And not just surviving the cold, but thriving in it, jumping through the ice and crashing in, in temperatures that are so bad it requires safety divers. <laughs> but the kind of extremes that I'm talking about are environments that are involved with bacterial cells. The life that we're used to seeing comes in many forms, whether you're talking about trees or plants, or the inauguration with the sea of humanity that you see there. <laughs> <laughs> 